Well, welcome back to my shop, and uh, I'm going to do two, hopefully, last things with this radio. One is I'm going to investigate a little further the apparent slow FM startup on it. And I, I may have, in the past, had it on partial power, and other factors may have been at play I wasn't fully aware of. So I'm going to start it up on full power on FM, and we'll see what happens. And the other thing I'm going to investigate is the neon light. You know, when I first saw the neon light, the first thing I thought was, why would they put a neon light in here? Why not a more regular light bulb? And what I reasoned out in my head, I don't think I actually said anything about it on the video. What was going on in my head was I was thinking, well, look where the light is. The light is here, and you have to remove the entire chassis to change the light bulb. So if you put in a standard light bulb, it is going to burn out. It's got a life. It's going to burn out. Whereas neon bulbs essentially never burn out. So that's what I thought. They put a neon light here because it's in such an awkward place, no one would ever have to come back and replace it. It had to be pretty thoughtful on the part of the radio designers to do that. But some alternative possibilities for this light have come up. Uh, and uh, thank you, I think it's Amy who first suggested this, that in fact, it's really an indicator, a band indicator, or maybe even an FM signal reception strength indicator. So, um, I, you know, I didn't bother to look at the schematic uh, before I decided to install a uh, uh, more typical pilot light, on type pilot light. And um, when I did look at the uh, schematic, I was a little stunned to see exactly where the neon light was wired. It's not wired across the power supply uh, voltage, the 120 line volts. It's connected to B+. So that's kind of interesting. Um, now, in a lot of these AM FM radios, when you switch bands, you actually move the B+, from, um, or at least you energize the FM circuits. Maybe the AM circuits remain energized, the AM tubes. And by energized, I mean the B plus is applied, the high voltage is applied to them. So in this case, it would make sense if you wanted to indicate FM to hook up the FM indicator light to the B plus that comes on when you switch to FM. And what better light to use than one that draws almost no current, a neon light. So that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Except the band selector switch has a little red dot on it, so it's pretty darn easy to see which band you've switched to by looking at the switch. It only has two positions, and you know if you've moved it this way, it's AM, and that way it's FM. I'm not sure how the light would help with that. On the signal strength side, um, most radios that have signal strength indicators are relying on the AVC voltage which is turning up and down the gain on a few of the tubes in the radio to compensate for the weak and strong signals. And that circuit is very high impedance. You couldn't possibly put a light on it. Voltages range from 0 to 15 volts, something of that sort. You couldn't fire a neon light off of 15 volts. So I'm, I'm I don't know where else you can get a signal strength, <laughs> signal, strength signal uh, to feed to a neon light unless they've done something more in this radio I'm just not familiar with. So I'm discounting that idea, but I really don't know. So I think I'm going to take a look at the schematic, which is on the bottom of the cabinet, and see if I can't analyze my way through it and figure out from there what the neon light is for. Now I have something here. Oh, it must be in my little red toolbox. You know, when I was a kid, a young kid, my parents recognized my interest in electricity. It was a little bit obvious. And they gave me this for Christmas. <laughs> Can you believe it? Like I was like seven years old, eight years old. Well, maybe nine. I can't remember now. They gave me a neon test light. Can you believe it? <laughs> this was one of my favorite gifts. And the bizarre thing is, holding it here in my hand. I still have it. It's in perfect condition. And I use it fairly regularly. The only thing that's ever happened to this thing is the rivet has given out and I kind of hammered it back so it's 
still together. And there's a regular neon light. I'm sure we could just put this in the circuit where the neon light was and we can watch this thing operate and find out for sure what it does. But I really think the radio is better off with a general pilot light that indicates when the switch is on. That way, if you have the volume turned down to minimum, and there's no other evidence that the radio is on, well, that's kind of, a, wait a minute, I kind of ruined that sentence, didn't I? If you didn't have a light, there'd be no evidence the radio was on. So if you had it on AM, and you turned down the volume, and then forgot, you'd never know this thing was on. So, uh, so I, you know, thumbs up on a general pilot light. Now, another concern I have, uh, the slow to come to life FM, I'm wondering if this is somehow related to the neon light. I, I don't know how, that's why I want to study the uh, schematic. Maybe these two things are related in some way. I don't really know. So let, let's uh, start by taking a look at the schematic. Okay, so uh, it's great that they put the schematic right on the bottom of the radio. That's a big, I give another thumbs up for, for that little move. That's a great thing. So let's take a closer look at it now. Doesn't take long to analyze this, that's for sure. So, there's the neon light, and it's connected just to the chassis on one side. The other side through a resistor, 50K, 22K, I don't know why it's got, I don't know what that is, why are there two numbers there? Some, uh, you know, medium-sized resistor here, and then it's connected right to the power supply cap, capacitor, 150 volts. It can't be doing anything but coming on when the radio is switched on. It's not involved with a band switch or anything. Any time this power supply comes on, that light will come on. Okay, so it's nothing fancy about this. So it may be, uh, maybe I should just turn my microphones up here a little bit because I had them down while I was working on that big amp there. The but. Uh, Never mind what I just said. If I never mind what I'm saying right now, let's get, <laughs> let's get back to this. Yeah, see, editing would fix all this. Um, so it's nothing more than an indicator light, and because the neon light needs a little bit of voltage to trigger it, for some reason they chose not to put it across the power line. Maybe maybe they thought this was a safer approach or something like that. The, I wonder if the little bulb had shorted right out. You'd have 50k across, a, uh, you know, 100 and 150 volts. I suppose I wouldn't have done anything to the radio. I might have sat there, shorted, warming this resistor up a little bit, and no one would ever know. That's probably the case. So, I think that settles it. Then the light I put in serves exactly the same purpose. It's just connected down here across the power line because it needs 120 volts to operate. Okay, so I think that's the end of that mystery. Or that, not really a mystery, but that, those, those questions that everybody had, including me. Well, what is going on? I wonder if they really did that because they were putting the light in an unserviceable place. A consumer, un, unserviceable consumer location, if I can put it that way. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to break the speaker wires here if I'm not. There we go. Now the next thing is the slow startup on FM. Uh, let me just grab the front panel here. I want to make sure the radio is switched to FM. FM is that way. So that's FM, no question about it. And uh, nothing else special here. Now this radio has not been on for well, quite a few days. Here, hang on, let me just put this. Put that where it won't fall and break. Which is, in other words, outside of my shop. Uh, I just plan to switch this on full power. And uh, we'll sit here and wait. Um,
weight one cotton pigment. Now this is the volume here. Let me make absolutely sure here. Right. So I'm gonna put the volume up pretty high, about halfway, so we, we won't be fooled by a low volume. And uh, FM antenna wire is down here. And I'm going to clip it, clip it to the outdoor antenna. Make sure we're not fooled by a, a lack of signal. I think we're all set here. Yeah, so I mean, just going back to the neon thing, there's no reason to test it with this neon light. But I got to tell you about my uh, my neon light story. That's one of the few things my parents gave me that I didn't eventually take apart. Okay, let's hit the switch here. There's my panel. You hear these switches going all the time, but I seldom have them on camera. So, so this arms the panel and turns the indicator light on. And this switch, if I uh, switch it down, it engages the light bulbs here. Oop. Here. If I switch it up, it's just straight power. It is through a uh, isolation a transformer. You can actually see it sitting here. And actually, I get a little extra boost out of that. It's not quite one-to-one. -one. So uh, this thing's going to get uh, and, and, and the line voltage or the voltage it's running on will be indicated here. So are we all set? Is there any reason for me not to turn this on? Is my escape path clear? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we got to time this. We got to time this. Okay. Well, it's 9:02 on my clock there. Or better yet, I can look up at my computer clock. Let me just click that on. Okay, and well, I would normally expect something like this to take 15 to 20 seconds to warm up, and not much more. So uh, here we go, right now. Hey, there's my indicator light. I see one of the tubes really flashes up, so one tube is taking a bit of a punch there when you first uh, turn it on. That's five seconds. 10 seconds. I won't call it out anymore. I hear something. And 30 seconds. Okay, so I would say this is an unusually long period of time to wait. Nothing like making a video of waiting with no motion in the video. Is there a chance I've got to tune between stations? Hey, I can tune it. That sounds like partial operation. leave it right there. A partial operation could be uh, voltage not reaching uh, one of the two elements properly. Why, why, uh, why that would be, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, there's a whole list of things. Oh, no. It's a whole list of things. Uh, cold solder joints, uh, problem in one of the tubes. A resistor or capacitor with some kind of, especially a resistor with an internal uh, problem, and when it warms up a bit, the problem goes away. Could be Draper, my cat. Draper's not actually my cat, he's my son's cat. I've lost track of the time now, but I think we're at uh, two and a half minutes.
So then, this is way beyond being normal. This is just not normal. Who wants a radio that you got to wait two and a half minutes for it to come on? Of course, if you think about it, we wait two and a half minutes for our computers to start up. I always thought that was kind of a funny thing, because it used to you know, always wait for the tubes to warm up, for your TV to come on, your radio to come on, and then somebody developed Instant On, which is such a simple thing to do to a TV or radio. Here it comes, maybe. No. And then from then on, everybody's televisions uh, came on instantly, or, or virtually instantly. And then many years went by, and along comes the latest technology, computers, and we still sit here now and turn them on and wait, wait, wait. Just on that note, my computer here, and I'm just filling in time here, waiting for the radio to come on. My computer that uh, I'm using to make this recording, I just uh, upgraded it. Uh, as you, you may be aware. And along with a better processor, I put in a digital, no, I can say a hard drive, solid state hard drive, that's the way to describe it. So the hard drive is like a huge uh, memory stick, a huge uh, USB memory stick. Well, it's not a USB thing, don't, don't get me wrong, it's a hard drive plugged into the, uh, built into the computer now. But it is so fast that my computer boots up in five or six seconds. And they're not expensive, so uh, hey, if you got 150 bucks, you might want to think about sticking in a uh, solid state drive. They're probably going to become the, the, the norm. Well, I get no no sensation that anything is changing in the radio. Um, it seems to have warmed up to a state, and then it's sitting in this state, very stable. That leaves me in a state of confusion. I don't want to touch anything during this test. This takes a long time. I'll start chopping pieces out of this video um, to compress it a little bit. And just on the video editing side, um, if you're watching my videos, you know my practice is to not edit them. Uh, of course, there is a little bit of editing going on. Uh, and there is some production work, which I wouldn't really call editing. It's just putting together video segments and stuff like that. Um, I even let the bad stuff go, you know, the stupid things and the bad stuff and the mistakes and the, all that stuff go out on my videos. And p part of the reason for that is my, my goal here is to fix things, it's not really to make videos. Video making is actually a secondary side to this. And if I started editing them and trying to produce really nice videos, and there's lots of guys who do this, and they make fantastic videos, no doubt about it. I wouldn't be in here much. Hey, something's happening now. Well, I totally lost track of the time, but I think it's closer to five minutes here. Definitely something's happening. I'd be willing to bet if I could put a test meter onto the right circuit that we could watch a voltage rising, rising up while we hear this happening. Why would that be? There yet. It's 
Starting to sound good. Turn it down here. So I can't afford to let any music uh, come through or I'll get a copyright uh, hit. So, what I'm guessing is that the voltage is leaking very slowly into the place where it's supposed to get to. That voltage is, I shouldn't really say that, should I? The voltage is building up somewhere to where it should be because the current is leaking into that location or that part of the circuit very slowly through some kind of restriction. I don't get the impression that heat is actually a factor in this. Um, and I'm just guessing. Uh, I'm guessing it's something like a nearly open resistor that blocking the B plus voltage from reaching certain tubes. Maybe if we stare a little bit at that schematic again, I could pick off some likely candidates. And if if it is a not heat related thing, if it's just a uh, hundred k resistor has become a 10 mega ohm resistor, I should be able to find it just by reading resistances. That's my thinking. So a little bit of time doing that might pay off on this radio, it's particularly if I can isolate it down to a few possible candidates. Now we didn't do it here, but I'm pretty sure the AM works within 10-15 seconds, just as you would imagine. So the problem lies in the FM circuits. From the way the sound built up, I couldn't tell you if it's in the IF or if it's the uh, <coughs> detector. I'm not even sure if the detector has much plate voltage on it or voltages on it. So I, I or either of these two FM tubes. I I don't know. So uh, I think studying that schematic is a good idea. So I'm going to power it down. I guess another interesting thing too is if I were to discharge the high voltage, uh, assuming it's a high voltage problem, if I discharged it, then it wouldn't recover quickly. It would take this five minute trip building back up. And also, the only way you can have such a slowly building up voltage through some kind of restriction is that the, uh, the current is flowing into a very high impedance circuit. Um, because if, it's, if, if there's any chance, a tiny trickle of current into it would flow out some other way and be grounded out, like a, like a grid leak resistor operates, to keep the uh, grid potential uh, where it should be, and in cl close to chassis or wh wherever it should be. Um, big resistor, but its job is to leak very little current. So, okay, so let's take a look at the schematic again here.